Welcome to the Ultimate Life Television Program, brought to you by Pastor Gracia Selassie, a we of Treasure House ICGC, where you are treasured and not trashed. Welcome to the Ultimate Life Broadcast. I'm your host, Gracia Selassie, a we pastor of Treasure House ICGC. Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. It's life above the ordinary. It's called the ultimate life. On this program, you are presented with the blueprint for the ultimate life. So expect to be transformed, expect to grow, expect the ultimate life. During our last episode, we're looking at the subject of do you understand what you are reading? We looked at four ways that we live. Or we do life. Insight, foresight, hindsight, and short-sightedness. God doesn't want us to live by hindsight or short-sightedness. He wants us to live by insight and uh, foresight. We then looked at the value of foresight. We also looked at the value of uh, insight and then we looked at the tragedy of hindsight and the tragedy of short sightedness. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 8 to 10. It reads, For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproduct unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have them is near sighted and blind forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. We have been saved not to sin, not to be selfish, but so we can grow. We are not meant to just be saved. Now I'm saved, going to heaven. No, you have to develop your life. God loves me. He saved me. I belong to Jesus. Now I'm going to do something with what's been given. Make of my life something awesome for the glory of God. Look at how radical Solomon is when he talks about short-sighted people. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 13 it says you'll find wisdom on the lips of a person of insight but the short-sighted needs a slap in uh, the face he's saying they need a slap they need to be jacked because if you just live for now and just look at your little world, you'll never get anywhere. And eventually, in hindsight, you look back and regret. Some people need to be jagged out of short-sightedness. Let's look at ways of developing insight and foresight in our lives. Number one, see it as more important than money. See it as more important than money. It will bring money into your life if you have insight and uh, foresight. But if you've got money without insight and foresight, you lose the money. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 13 to 17, it says, I also saw under the sun this example of wisdom that greatly impressed me. There was once a small city with only a few people in it, and a powerful king came against it, surrounded it, and built huge siege works against it. Now there, now there lived in that city a man, poor but wise, and he saved the city by his wisdom. But nobody remembered that, that poor man. So I said, wisdom is better than strength. But the poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are no longer heeded. The quiet words of the wise are more to be heeded than the shouts of a ruler of fools. 
We need to go after insight and foresight more than we chase after money or possessions. Because once you've got that, everything else fits into place. I've seen people with wealth, with education, with possessions, but they lacked insight and foresight. And as a result, they saw trouble in their lives. They lost their business, they lost their marriage, they lost their spiritual lives. And the things that are most important, they play second place. And in the end, it causes the ruin of their lives. Number two, have a real passion and a desire to search for them. Remember I said, a real, have a real passion and a desire to search for them. Insight and foresight don't fall into your lap. You don't wake up one day and then boom, you have insight and foresight. It doesn't happen that way. In fact, a lot of Christians think insight and foresight come with age. The longer I'm a Christian, the wiser I will be. It doesn't work like that, mate. Sometimes age does not bring insight. Age comes all by itself. Whether you like it or not, you will age. It actually brings with it wrinkles. I've seen Christians who have been around 20 to 25 years and they don't have insight and foresight. They grow in their religiosity and in a Pharisee spirit. Wisdom doesn't come. It comes when you've got a desire. Proverbs 20, 1 to 5. Wine is a mocker and beer a brawler. Whoever is led astray by them is not wise. A king's wrath strikes terror like the roar of a lion. Those who anger him forfeit their lives. It is to one's honor to avoid strife, but every fool is quick to quarrel. Sluggards do not plow in season. So at harvest time, they look but find nothing. The purposes of a person's heart are deep waters, but one who has insight, one who has insight draws them out. That shows how valuable it is. Proverbs 3, 21 to 23. My son, do not let wisdom and understanding out of your sight. Preserve sound judgment and discretion. There will be life for you an ornament to graze your neck. Then you will go on your way in safety and your foot will not stumble. In other words, it will keep you from hindsight. The, the painful looking back that says, why did I do this? Proverbs 23, 23, reading from the Message Bible. I love this translation. It says, buy the truth. Don't sell it for love or money buy the truth buy the truth don't sell it for love or money buy wisdom buy education buy insight in other words pay the price emotionally and effort that's how you get it don't think it just comes how many of you today say i need insight i need foresight well beloved it's not just going to come You've got to desire it. You've got to pursue it. You've got to search for them. Number three, be careful in your choice of closest friends. Sometimes wise people are made fools by the people they mix with. People that you hang around can affect you even though you are smart. Book of Acts chapter 13 Verse 6 to 9. It says they traveled through the whole island until they came to Paphos. There they met a Jewish sorcerer and false prophet named Bar Jesus, who was an attendant of the proconsul Sergius Paulus. The proconsul, an intelligent man, sent for Barnabas and Saul because he wanted to hear the word of God. But Elimas, the sorcerer, for that that is what his name means opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul from the faith then Saul who was also called Paul filled with the holy spirit looked straight at Elimas and uh, said you need to be very careful who is close to you who is your relative because they could rob you of insight and foresight who is speaking into your life 
Whose voice are you listening to? I'm talking about your commitment to God, about your serving in the house, about your giving, about your work with God, about uh, churches in general. Be careful when people even criticize other churches because sooner or later they'll start, they'll start criticizing you. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 4 and 5. Say to wisdom, you are my sister. And to insight, you are my relative. They will keep you from the adulterous woman, from the wayward woman with her seductive uh, words. When you've got insight, the people around you don't easily lead you astray. Why? Because you know. Hang on a minute. This is not what it looks like. Be very careful of people around you who pay you flattery compliments. There is a very fine line and we need to be very careful. Maybe I should have married that person. They make me feel so special. No, don't go down that slippery road. It will lead to trouble. It will lead to disgrace. It will lead to humiliation, complications, and embarrassment. A person without insight and foresight ends up there in hindsight with trouble. And we end up having to carry and work with you and pick up the pieces when we could be progressing as the people of God. Number four, saturate yourself in the word of God. Jeremiah 15, 16. It says, your words were found and I ate them and your words became for me a joy and the delight of my heart for I've been called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. Most of us expect the church and others to spoon feed us. There are things the church and others can do for you, but there are things you have to do for yourself. You have to take the responsibility for your own spiritual health and nourishment. I'll say that again. You have to take resp responsibility for your own spiritual health and uh, nourishment. No one but you can sit before the Lord to hear his instructions for you. Jesus' words to Martha rings true as he speaks to you and me. In Luke chapter 10, uh, verse 41 and 42, he says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and bothered about so many things, but only one thing is necessary. For Mary has chosen the good path, which shall not be taken away from her. God's word, the Bible, is crucially important to our everyday lives. And don't think obscure religious knowledge here. Think food. Think water. Think air. You can survive without God's insight and wisdom. The word of God contains insight, gives us foresight and wisdom. And we can have a successful life without regret if we pay attention to the word. When the Indian Ocean uh, tsunami took place in 2004, there were people at the beach who were worn by their children when the water receded because they learned about it at school that when that happens to the sea a tsunami is coming they had insight and foresight into what was happening some parents listened and left the beach others laughed and said oh this these are children what what, what do they know what, what what are they talking about the word of god paints a picture of everything that's happening in our world and gives us warnings the lockdown was a warning that there is a tsunami of financial trouble coming and and you mustn't live in the world thinking you are all secured because this world is not very secured this is a very very troubled world when you read the bible it will paint a picture for you so i want to encourage you to get into the word get into the word psalm 19 the 7 to 8 it says the law of the lord is perfect refreshing the soul the statutes of the lord are trustworthy making wise the simple the precepts of the lord are right giving joy to the heart the commands of the lord are radiant giving light to the eyes i love god's word psalm 119 verse 98 to 100 
He says, your commands are always with me and make me wiser than my enemies. I have more insight than all my teachers, for I meditate on your statutes. I have more understanding than the elders, for I obey your precepts. First Corinthians chapter 2 says, But the spiritual man has insight into everything. Get into the way. It will give you insight and foresight. And, and it will keep you from hindsight and the pain and regret that it brings. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. How blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. You know what? Spending a rush time alone with God in his word releases a fountain of refreshment from the core of your being. Number five, we need to ask God for it. You want insight? You want foresight? Ask God for it. Prayer will unlock insight and, and give you gifts and wisdom and knowledge. You, you need to pray and ask God to guide you and, and keep you from making big mistakes so that in hindsight, you, you don't lose all your money. You don't lose your family and lose your life. And, and you must trust God for the gifts of the Spirit. Daniel chapter 9 verse 22 and 23 he instructed me and said to me daniel i've now come to give you insight and understanding as soon as you began to pray a word went out which i have come to tell you for you are highly esteemed therefore consider the word and uh, the vision philippians chapter 1 verse 9 and this is my prayer that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and uh, depth of insight. You need to turn this scripture into a prayer that God will cause your love for him to, to increase, to abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight. I think we don't pray enough about the matters in our lives. Bill Hybels wanted to take on a guy whom he liked in his church, who was a businessman and a very successful one. He took him out for lunch because he wanted him to come on staff. His, his board advises him to do this. During the lunch, he was waiting for the right opportunity to make the offer to him. But he didn't have the green light from the Lord to do it because he had prayed about it. So he went back to the board and said to them, I couldn't do it. And everyone said, why didn't you? We need him. Go ahead. And employ him. But he felt a pushback, a restraint. Guess what? Six months later, it came to light that this guy was living in deception. And it all came out. A huge explosion. He was embarrassed and disgraced. He's been totally disqualified from ministry in any church. And if he had been on their staff, he would have damaged that large uh, world influential church if you know anything about willow creek community church is a very influential church but because of discernment insight and foresight he made the right decision and god protected the church number six don't either rush or lock into one point of view some people have a point of view and they never change it don't be like that grow in wisdom and understanding Keep learning. Keep looking to God and always reflect on things. So when, when you don't understand something, what you need to do is think about it. Don't rush into something and just grab everything new. We need to be careful, especially with social media because there's a lot of influence coming from social media. Don't lock into one point of view. Dwell on the thing that you don't understand and, and, and reflect on it and ask God, to give you insight there are a lot of things that are happening in our world and people don't have insight into them second timothy chapter 2 verse 3 to 7 it says join with me in suffering like a good soldier of christ jesus no one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs but rather tries to please his commanding officer similarly 
anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown except by competing according to the rules. The hard-working farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. Reflect, have you seen the word? Reflect on what I'm saying for the Lord will give you insight into all this. You know what? Our maturity as believers is not determined by how long we have been in church or how well we pray or the number of scriptures we quote is by discernment, is by having our senses exercised. That's how you judge maturity. Saints, we, we need to be very discerning. We need to we, we need a, we need we need we need we need we need the spirit of discernment. We need to understand what is going on. When you study the Bible, I think in the book of Jeremiah, it says, you know, the birds and the and the fishes of the sea, they know their seasons and their timings, but my people do not know. When you read the Bible, there were two occasions uh where Jesus Christ wept. One when Lazarus was dead. The, the second time was when he overlooked Jerusalem. And he wept over them because they, they, they didn't understand their season. They didn't know the timings of God for them. It was said of the sons of Issachar that they understood the times and knew what Israel ought to do. We need discernment. We need insight. We need foresight. We need to understand what is happening in our world and how to live our lives. If you are listening to me today and you haven't handed over ownership of your life to Christ I want to encourage you to do that we are not going to be here forever our lives have been loaned to us and one day we'll stand before God and give account of our lives someone said life is a hyphen between two dates the date you were born and the date you die we don't have we don't have control over the date or the day we were born or the day we we'll die we celebrate our birthdays but we don't know when we are going to die. When it was time for you to come into this world, your mom pushed you out. And if you didn't want to come, or when you didn't want to come, they took you out by cesarean. So we all celebrate birthdays. But I don't know, we don't know when we are going to die unless you're on death row. So we don't have control over these two dates. The only date or what the only thing you have control over is the hyphen, the dash in between. You can either squander it or invest it. So let's use it wisely. So I want to encourage you to give your life to Christ. I want to pray a prayer and I want to include in that prayer. Say this after me. Lord, today I recognize that I'm a sinner who needs a savior. Lord, please have mercy on me. Forgive me of my sins. I believe with all my heart that you died for me and rose again. And, and I confess your lordship over my life. Help me live for you all the days of my life. Make me a new creature. Take away or take this stony heart out of me and give me a, a heart of flesh. Breathe your life on me and into me. Make me new. Make me your own. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray this simple prayer, I want to know you are born again, you are saved. You are now a child of God. Welcome into God's kingdom and heaven. Is rejoicing because of you and now let me agree with you I declare that your mind is being impacted by the wisdom of God your thinking is becoming powerful is becoming accurate is becoming more God centered or God centered in the name of Jesus I pray for you that God will give you the kind of wisdom and understanding that will enrich every area of your life your your family your your work and and, and 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 service for God. I declare that you are walking in grace and wisdom and you you, you are throwing off the old uh and, 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 and walking in the new. The old is gone, the new has come. Whatever you do with your hands and intellect will be exceedingly fruitful and rewarding. I declare that failure and lack will be far away from you in the name of Jesus. I declare that you, you, you walk and thrive in, in exceeding wisdom, understanding and knowledge. You, you will not fail 
I prophesy that you will not fail, you will not falter. In the mighty name of Jesus, I speak over you. I effect change. Let there be a shift in your life through God's word. In the name of Jesus, I declare that your understanding is widely open to the will and the purpose of God for your life and destiny. Right now, begin to thank God for making you a new creation. And boldly confess that your life is now lived on a higher plane in Christ Jesus. I trust that today's message has been a blessing to you. Remember, if you want a life that is going to be as abundant as possible without chaos and confusion, don't live it any other way. You live it by God's way. God bless you for tuning in and I look forward to coming your way next time. Have a great week and be blessed. Thank you for watching the Ultimate Life Television program. We hope you have been blessed by the teaching. Tune in to our next program on the same channel and the same time next week. You are cordially invited to visit Treasure House ICGC for our Sunday morning church services at the New Horizon Center, South Lodge Avenue, adjacent to the Pollards Hill Library, CR4 1LT. For ministry products and other information, please contact us on 0208-355-3461 or send an email to pastor at treasurehouseicgc.co.uk. You may also visit our website www.treasurehouseicgc.co.uk. Our service times are as follows, Sunday 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. and Wednesday 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. You can also download our ministry app, Gracious Awaye, to listen to Pastor Gray's messages from the Apple Store or Google Play Store. May God richly bless you.